down like that, he is massively vulnerable to the attentions of lions and hyenas. I say he, but I do mean she in her particular case. Walking very slowly to the water. It's been a very Sunday afternoon -y here at this water hole. We haven't done a huge amount of moving around. And everything's just kind of come this way, which has been rather splendid. Ah. Now I'm just going to put my jersey on because it's getting a bit cold. But David, of course, will suffer through the cold because he is, must bring you pictures, unfettered access to this beautiful giraffe cow. Um, I think we're just going to sit here if it's all the same to you, everyone, simply because she's coming to have a drink. And if we start moving around, I think she will be distracted and perhaps not come down. Just to give you an update, apparently those lions have been found. And Byron is waiting to sort of get into the site. So we should be seeing lions very soon. There she comes. And look at the colours. Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah. David very cleverly pointed out that I left my busby inside my shirt. And therefore I became inaudible briefly. Hold on. Look at the colours there of her, juxtaposed with the reds and oranges and golds and browns of the trees behind. I think that's stunning. In the background, you can hear a. I just. I've only just realised this. That's a Shelley's Franklin calling. Come on, old girl. That's it. No, don't stop. Keep going. <laughs> She's thinking, oh, I don't know about this. There's just a bit too much activity around here. There are large, strange birds around that aren't here normally. There's a car parked. I'm on camera. Don't know if I want to drink anymore. Looking at the wildebeestorf behind. Oxpecker tickling away at her neck. Considering all her options. And I'm being slightly facetious, of course, but this is what they do all the time. You've got to be very careful. She'll be checking every bush to see if there isn't a lion lying in wait to devour her when she spreads her front legs apart to bend over and have a drink. It's not that usual that we get to see this kind of thing, so I think it's worth just sitting for a little while longer. There was another one coming, there are another two coming. Oh, it's all happening here. Of course, <laughs> well, Dave, every time I point at something in a different direction is to re-level the camera. That's why the horizon tilts slightly like you're on a boat every so often. Moving painstakingly closer to the water. Come on, brave lady. There's the Shelley's Franklin calling. Yes, we are standing here. We have not moved. Oh, they're so gracefully making their way across the clearing. The other two, and this one, now thinking, they always seem to get into this drinking mode where they duck their heads a bit, then lift them up again and stand and look ponderous about the place. Duck their head half a little bit, back up again. Trying to decide if it's actually worth having a drink or not. And they're not particularly water dependent, so they don't have to drink. But if they can, they will. Oh, look at that. Three of them. 
Here we are. The Great Journey of Giraffe. There's another one in the background, Dave. Way away there. Dark, dark one. There you are. Left a bit. Yeah, that's it. They're all coming. There seems to be some kind of a Sunday evening giraffe conference here. That's a big bull. He's the second bull. Now they will probably be in communication. We can't hear it. There's the first bull. The others are cows. You'll probably be in communication with all of them. They talk with or talk. I mean, they communicate with a very low rumbling infrasound, which we are unable to hear with our fairly unsophisticated ears. Look how the male is a lot less cautious than the females. A lot less considerate of the dangers that might be here. He's just thinking about getting to the pub with the girls. See that, David? That that'd be a lesson to you. Mm -hmm. Ill-considered drinks at pubs with girls can lead to trouble. He doesn't think much of that advice at all. He's fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful. And now they're all standing going, ah, I wonder what we should do now. I don't know what she thinks she's doing. If there's some kind of communication going on here, if she's looking for lions or cheetahs, if, she, if she's, I don't know, I mean, I've got no idea. Thinking maybe there's a crocodile in here, keeping an eye out for that. The oxpeckers are all going, <laughs> sometimes an alarm call from them. Not always. They are sometimes in these groups, and they're often in these groups, not permanently, so that's sort of a loose, a loose association that they have here. And the females are much more likely to be together than the males. This is an unbelievable sighting. And Deborah Armchair Traveller, good question. You say, do I think that giraffe communicate with elephants with that low frequency rumbling? No. Deborah, I'm almost certain that they don't. I'm almost certain that that low frequency rumbling is an entirely, in, you know, single specific noise that they make. So I don't think that they'll hear it. If an elephant calls, they might hear if an elephant calls. I won't know what it means, though. So it's just a tone. It's not, it's not the actual... I, I, hate, I hesitate to use the term words, but it isn't the actual words that they're hearing. It would just be the sound. This is just fantastic. I really do feel rather privileged to be witnessing this lot. And Tasha, you say, do they have a leader? No, absolutely not, they don't. Um, I think giraffe dominance and the like is decided by size almost exclusively. And that's certainly the case with the males. And I don't imagine there's any kind of hierarchy amongst the females at all. Now this chap is thinking about having a drink. Look at this, isn't that wonderful with their reflections? I think that's stunning. <laughs> Very nice, David. A giraffe are ideal for an imbecile photographer like myself because they move so very slowly. The colour around us is just incredible. It's like an orange glow has enveloped us, and these giraffe. Uh, well, they're covered in the same sort of orange, aren't they? 
And you saw those pictures of the different giraffe. Now, these chaps, if you saw these chaps together and you didn't know any better, you'd say, oh, well, they definitely belong to a different subspecies from each other because they're all different colours. And this is why it gets so difficult to decide how many subspecies there genuinely are. Wonderful stuff. Now, Julianne, very astute question, which I possibly should have given you the answer to before you even asked it. You said, do the subspecies live together? No, Julianne, they don't live together. They live on their own, and they're separated by geography, and that's, in fact, probably why they've evolved to be slightly different subspecies. They would have all been the same at one stage. Very nicely thought out. So you can almost completely, you can almost completely show uh, what the subspecies is from where they occur. All right, let's go back across to our old pal Byron, find out um, if he's been enjoying his afternoon off, and.